guys, so the question and answer that I did last week was obviously a huge hit because I don't know what's going on, but I'm getting question after question after question come into my inbox this week. So today I thought I would do another short and sweet Q&A for you guys. This one's gonna be a little less chatty than last one. I look back and I was chatting a little bit long, so I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet. But yeah, I'm gonna get to some more of your questions and you know, as always, if you have any more, feel free to send them my way. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first question is from Erin and she says, I'd be interested to know how and if you meal plan differently when it's three versus six in your house, especially if your stepkids are used to eating different things when they're at their mom's and how you handle that. Um, yeah, I absolutely, our meal planning looks very different uh, one week from the next. So we have the kids with us you know, one week on and then we have our week off. You know, when we have the kids, it's like spaghetti, homemade chicken noodle soup, mac and cheese, uh, Taco Tuesday's a big hit, chicken wraps, chili, pretty kid friendly stuff. We try to keep it healthy, but also stuff that the kids do like and are used to eating. I'm not sure what they eat at their mom's, but they definitely like what we have here. We don't really talk about you know, what is eaten at one house versus the next. When it's just my husband, Reese and I, you know, we definitely branch out. Our meals are a bit healthier. Soups, salad, fish, salmon, kind of all of that. Steak. Reese is not a picky eater at all. Since day one, she's kind of eaten anything and everything. So yeah, to answer your question, we definitely do it different from our week on to our week off. The other piece that I want to touch on is that like if the kids don't like something that we're having for dinner, we typically won't have it again. And I might have some moms who are totally outraged with me saying that, but honestly, we have so much going on in our lives that I'm just not interested in having battles over food. So I really do try to pick things that everyone does enjoy uh, so that we don't have any mealtime battles. That being said, I'm not a short order cook. So if you don't like what we're having, I'm not gonna make you your own separate meal. While I do try to make sure that everyone likes everything we eat, I'm not gonna be sitting here taking orders from four different kids. It's just not gonna happen. All right, next question. This one is from Kendall. She says, I'm looking for first time mommy tips. How do you deal with your little one at home and the bonus babies missing their siblings? You know, this is probably the most heartbreaking thing for me right now because my daughter, when my stepchildren go back to their mom's house for the week, she is walking around, calling their names, going into their rooms, looking for them. You know, the first couple days is a huge transition for her. She's a little more whiny and sad. So it's really one of those problems when it comes to your kids that you can't solve for them because it is the reality, right? But what you can do is try to make it a little easier with extra hugs, extra kisses, some quality time. You know, FaceTime's always fun. Making sure they can have those phone conversations if that's possible. Um, but yeah, it just really is a tough situation. And I think a lot of times we forget. Um, we're always focused on the struggles for stepchildren or for children of divorce. And we forget that when you add another baby into the mix, it can be really troubling for them as well. All right, Jessica wants to know how to explain a family dynamic to the little ones when they start asking about why mommy and daddy broke up. You know what, I'm a big advocate for giving the truth and making sure it's age appropriate. So, you know, if the truth is very adult, then no, you don't provide the whole truth. You don't talk about, um, you know, your ex in a negative light to the kids, but just say, you know, mom and dad decided that it was best that we aren't together anymore and that um, that doesn't mean we love you any less. It's just what we decided was best for our family and, you know, go from there. If they start to ask, you know, more questions that aren't necessarily appropriate for their age, then just say, you know what, that's an adult problem and you don't have to worry about that because you're a kid and move on. But I really do think it's important to tell as much of the truth as possible um, that's appropriate for their age without talking smack about your ex because that is just, you know what, it's disgusting and it's very damaging to kids. So make sure it's age appropriate, it's the truth, and that you're not putting anyone down. All right, so next question is from Megan. She says, I'm looking for some advice on how to help the kids with transition day. Um, so what she means by that is the day when the kids come back from their moms or when they go to their moms from your house. For us, I do find a bit of a difference um, in how the dynamic of our home is on transition day. Kids are just getting used to the new routine, new place, kind of easing into our type of schedule, I guess, is the way to say it. Um, you know, my advice is just be patient with the kids, a little more lenient on the rules. Um, Cause you know, even if you do have very similar rules to their mom's house or their dad's house, 
there is a bit of a transition and there are gonna be some tiny differences in terms of how you guys do things. You know, be patient, re realize that, you know, Kids forget rules when they're in the same house all the time, right? Kids pretty much have a memory of a goldfish when it comes to rules and structure and the expectations of them, right? I often get, oh, I forgot. What do you mean you forgot? This has been the rule for the last two years. But it's true, kids literally do forget. You know what, I find that after a couple of days, everyone gets into their groove and uh, it's good. You know, if your kids are struggling with being away from the other parent, phone calls are always great. You know, let them know that they can always touch base with their other parent. I think that that's very, very important. If the child wants to talk to the other parent, they should always be allowed to call. Um, that's my opinion, not necessarily the opinion of everyone, but that's how I feel. But just remember, it's a transition for you too, right? Your house just went from being pretty quiet to all of a sudden there's a whole load of kids here so you know as much as it's a transition for you remember that they are struggling as well all right Jessica how do you handle discipline with your stepkids when your husband isn't home when it's directed towards you do you wait to talk to your husband or you handle it directly if you were to ask me this a year and a half ago I would say that I just handle it directly and there's never been any backlash um, we don't have a lot of behavioral issues like I'm gonna be honest but when things do come up like I need to remind them to do certain things I'll remind them and if they don't, you know, there was a period where I'd be like, well, like obviously you can't have your iPhone right now or you can't have your iPad right now or take something away that, you know, they value. As the kids have gotten older, especially the two older ones, they're teenagers now. And I've said this before, I've realized teenagers and tweenagers are a lot more forgiving of their real parents. So I typically just try to stay out of that, pick my battles and just have their dad have a conversation with them later. It's not worth the struggle. Now, if there was something that required immediate attention, obviously I'm gonna step in. But um, yeah, I really, it, it, there has been a bit of a shift in the house uh, in terms of my role and discipline. All right, Laura, I have a stepson who's 14 and only wants to play his video games, you and everyone else. Um, when we have him, which is every other weekend. So when we ask him to get off of games, he pouts and throws a fit. How do we get him off his videos um, and have fun? Nothing is fun when you're with your parents when you're 14. You know what, that's definitely an issue for so many parents. Video games are in screen time, it's a huge struggle right now. I would sit him down and say, hey, you know, this is why we feel like the video game thing is a little bit too much right now. What do you think would be um, a fair limit? Get his input on how much time he should be on his iPad or on his video games. Just tell him that you wanna come up with a compromise that works for everyone because you know, at 14 years old, they wanna feel like they're being heard. They wanna feel like their opinion matters. So come up with a compromise. At the end of the day, you are the parents. You can say yes or no, but it is really um, beneficial for them to feel like they're included in these types of decisions. And when conflict arises, if they've come up with the solution, they're much more apt to you know, not resist when you try to implement the rule. This message is from Kyla. She said that she would like to know how to deal with upset stepkids that want nothing to do with you when they're upset. You know what? If they don't want anything to do with you when they're upset, just respect that, right? There's a lot of people in my life who I'm super close with, but there's a few select people that I'm gonna talk to when I'm upset. And you just may not be that person for them right now. So, you know, respect the fact that they aren't necessarily comfortable having those conversations with you. Make sure that they know that you're there for them no matter what and just give them the space that they want, right? So I, I wouldn't push it because if you push it, um, it really could backfire right now. But a lot of you are asking me about my opinion on you starting a stepmom blog. So here's what I have to say about that. If you wanna start a stepmom blog, please make sure it's for the right reasons. Don't do it because you wanna air your dirty laundry online. It, don't do it because you wanna vent about your husband's ex-wife. If that's the case, get yourself a journal. And I'm sorry, I'm being really straight to the point there, but I feel like there's nothing tackier than putting someone else down online or um, you know, airing your family's dirty laundry. That's your private stuff. If your motivation is to open up the conversation about step family life, if it is to connect with a group of like-minded women, if it's just because you have a passion to write and you wanna talk about the positives of your life, that's amazing. We need a lot more positive stepmoms in this field. We really do need people to start talking about the pros and debunking those stepmom stereotypes that are still so prominent in our society. So if that's your motive, go for it and just start. But if it's the first thing, like I said, get yourself a journal because you're not doing it for the right reason. Anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Q&A. And um, like I said before, if you have any questions that you want me to quickly tackle, leave them in the comments below or shoot me an email at jamie at jamiescrimter.com. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.